Hey there, welcome everybody. This is our business influence and persuasion meetup this week for coaches and consultants. This is specifically going out to those of you that have a service that you know for a fact you can change people's lives, yet perhaps you're not yet driving the needle of those sales. So a big welcome to many of you who are joining me here once again, as well as as the room begins to fill up here, as well as those that are joining me for the first time here. Uh, so I'll give you a bit of the roadmap give you a bit of a roadmap of exactly where we're about to go in this conversation. A bit of a dialogue here today, uh, which a couple of things, first of all, you can see, of course, as it is online, you can leave a comment, you can drop something down below. Uh, by the way, those of you that are watching me right now, if you can hear me all right, let me know, because we just switched out microphones. Just drop the word okay, just let me know uh, if you can hear me all right. That way we can keep rolling here and dive into some really cool interactive stuff. Uh, so on a regular basis, I come into this community and share either one of three specific things. Sometimes I'll come on and just present information, kind of like what I'm about to do right now, to actually give you some strategies you can start to use in the shape of your business to start to scale things even further. Second of all, I'm going to ask you questions because by getting feedback from you to learn exactly where you are in the shape of your business, and what specific gaps need to be filled. That's what helps me to better educate you inside of this. Now, take note, today's kind of a cool combo of the first two, which is that this is a bit of prepared information as well as an open Q&A, but rather than Q&A about anything and everything, instead, we're doing a Q&A specifically on creating content that drives sales. I'll come back to that in a moment in terms of exactly what that's going to mean for us here today. And then third of all, where I see it appropriate to do so, I'll give you an invite to join me inside of my private mastermind community. So stick with me through this because I'll give you some of the frames in terms of where we're about to go inside of this. Again, if you can hear me all right, just let me know by dropping the word OK in the comments down below. And uh, there's a link in the comment, by the way, the description up above, because check out this magic sorcery. It says Facebook user. This software that I'm using just did a cool update recently in terms of some uh, technical type things, which is not showing your username unless you click that link up above. So if you are going to ask a question here while we're broadcasting live, go ahead and click that. Otherwise, you may be there as a Facebook user. Now, take note, I did send an email out earlier today to many of you inviting you to join me during this real-time stream. And I've got a couple of questions here we're going to kick off with to kind of get things up and rolling. But before we get into that, let me take a moment to kind of explain exactly what this entire world here is all about. Hypnotic influence for business. The people who I tend to work best with are the ones that are kind of falling into that category where, again, you know your business can create an impact in people's lives. And we have a bit of a wide variety of a community here watching at the moment as I'm looking at who's currently logged in. Uh, I've got people from helping professions as well as accountants, uh, contractors, lawyers. Uh, we've got a couple of fitness instructors here as well. And it's from my background working with people one-to-one -one as a professional hypnotist. The thing that I began to discover was that the same methods that I was using to help people to produce change, to overcome fears, to change their habits and behaviors, Something interesting began to happen as I started to go to marketing events, going to conventions and going through marketing training. And the amazing thing was these people were there and they were using some of the same language that I was already using in terms of helping my clients. This kind of created a bit of a cool reality though, a bit of a split reality because they didn't yet realize that they were using hypnotic language patterns. So when I came back and started to look at the nature of how to better scale my own business, when I started to use the words with intention, when I started to stack the influence in an appropriate, predictable order, that's where I then created a business that then scaled and created millions of dollars of income all around the world over the last dozen or so years. And that's where a lot of this is gonna be coming from here today. So one part of this is talking about influence inside of your business. Now, the other part is I want to help you out. I want to hear what your specific questions are when it comes to content creation. Because I'll tell you what we're not about around these parts. <laughs> this would not be the world if you joined me last week. This was kind of the presentation we talked about. 
this is not quite the world of just sort of throwing spaghetti at the wall and just hoping something sticks. In the words of Will Ferrell, it all comes around to strategery. So we want to make sure that every piece of content satisfies a specific purpose. So either elevating the knowledge and the skills that we have that our potential clients can begin to make use of, elevating their own identity so that now they are hypnotically placing themselves inside of their own success story and then logically, ethically, rightfully bonding us as a solution in terms of what it is they want to achieve, even if it's hiring a bookkeeper, even if it's hiring a fitness instructor. We want to hypnotically break the patterns as to what they've been doing up until now and present a better solution. We want to change criteria. And inside of my Business Influence Mastermind, we do a bit of a hit list in terms of, again, talking about what our content can provide. Let me kick off with uh, some of the questions that came in in advance of us uh, going live here. I sent an email out. These are the ones that came in. Uh, I'll pronounce it right. Barbara. It's not Barbara, it's Barbara. And I'm seeing that from the email here. I do a ton of strategy calls every week. Curious to find out what a ton actually equates to, by the way. And only about 20% of them book with me. Okay, here's clarification. Even though my rates are, rates are not that high, will YouTube help? So there's a couple of things to begin to unpack here. And uh, I'm curious to hear from those of you that are watching with me right now if this is a bit of a familiar pattern for you. To get a little more technical with what this often relates to, lead acquisition is not quite the problem. Conversion is the issue. This is a cool place to be, by the way, because this means half of the battle is done. It means that about you know, of all the people that are finding you, of the people that are directly interacting with you, they are taking action. Uh, as I'm assuming, and again, I don't yet have the qualification as to exactly what a ton of strategy calls would be. Uh, let's assume it's a plethora. Uh, so I do a ton of strategy calls a week and only about 20% book with me. I would say that might be a pretty good closing rate, but now that you're saying my rates are not that high, I don't yet know what industry you're in. Um, but the question more specifically then, that's kind of the setup. Will YouTube help? So there's a couple of things to begin to address here. And again, we want to create content that actually drives the marketing communication. We want to create content that actually drives people. And here's what we're all about here inside of business influence and persuasion for coaches and consultants. We want to create content that now has people selling themselves into what we do even before we ever make a sales offer. Now, your question's kind of interesting, Barbara, because you're asking, will YouTube help? And that's kind of like asking, um, will vitamins help? Well, maybe, but then again, what's the specific health issue someone might be facing. This is going to become a really sloppy metaphor because clearly nutritional science is not my expertise, but let's run with this here. That's like asking, will vitamins help? Because I don't know what specific problem you're facing and what specific vitamins you intend to take, right? That's like asking, um, you know, will exercise help me become healthier? Well, what's your specific measurement of criteria? It's where, as I work with people inside of our Influence Mastermind community, we talk about the importance of chunking down, getting into the specifics, getting into the smaller nuances, the building blocks, as to what someone wants, and then asking the right questions at the right time to then drive that communication to then make that appropriate ethical decision. So I've got to say, really, the question ought to be not will YouTube help, but instead, what content should I be producing in order to increase that conversion rate? Let's kind of level up the question and branch off of it based off of that new criteria here. So without nerding out too much, <laughs> there's a warning, without nerding out too much here, let's take the idea of funnel marketing, okay? So typically, and I tend to talk about this from different angles than others, but the classic model would be we begin with free content at the top of the funnel. That's how we become found. And 
let's call it out, you are currently interacting with a live stream, we could say this kind of falls into that category, then very often we may ask people to take action by some sort of an opt-in offer. Uh, then from there, maybe we can sell something as what, uh, what's his name in Digital Marketer? Ryan Dice calls an entry-level offer. Uh, I prefer the language of a value-added offer because now the value is added in both directions. This is where it's a bit of a lower entry payment portal to then main program, core offer, whatever your product or service may be. So these are those steps that people would often go through in the shape of that funnel. We have to expand this a little bit further though, which would be there's top of funnel content, there's middle of funnel content, and there's bottom of funnel content. Now, this is where we want to avoid overwhelm. This is where, as you see the different video influence systems that I often teach here, you can start to see the ways that we can start to craft our messaging in a much more cohesive way. But consider for a moment, what if you could change the entry point, Barbara, as to how people actually get to you? So perhaps, and I'll introduce a little bit of terminology here, perhaps we can onboard a little heavier which would be, I'm assuming if you're doing a ton of strategy calls, you're likely guiding them through some sort of application funnel, something like Calendly or Acuity, or there's a bunch of other scheduling platforms out there that make it so you can have someone answer some questions and then schedule a specific time. And here's the catch here, Barbara. There's a window of time where now between someone making the request and someone now reaching out to you, this is officially your middle of funnel area. Now this becomes a choice to make because you asked specifically, will YouTube help? Well, it depends. Do you want this middle of the funnel content to be there visible for the entire world? In which case, yeah, by all means, stick it onto something like YouTube, make it a public video. Uh, in the description, put a link to your website that's going to bump up a little bit of search engine optimization. I would encourage, this is what I've tested, this is what I've found to be one of the more effective strategies though, is that we want to bring them through a little bit more of a behind the scenes experience. So as soon as someone interacts with me, as soon as someone requests this call, this time to chat, we're going to begin to onboard with content that they cannot see unless they've actually reached out, whether it's an opt-in form, whether it's a private message, whether it's a comment down below, they're going to see information that's laser focused to this specific journey that they're now on. Because now I can speak a lot more specific in terms of what their goals are, right? So this is where you want to think about this in terms of that top of funnel content, middle of funnel content, bottom of funnel content, because really, I think what you're asking points more to the bottom of the funnel section, which would be that let's say you now do that strategy call and think about what's going to be different by the time that you're actually on that call with someone and maybe they've had a full tour in terms of what your service can do. Maybe perhaps they already understand why you're in your specific marketplace, you stand out as one of the better options. Uh, we are, just as an example, we're putting solar panels on our roof in the next couple of months. And the company that we went with uh, actually killed, metaphorically, killed all the other companies before we ever could talk to the others. Because he just pulls out a sheet of paper and draws a grid of like five lines. Here's our warranty on this. Here's our warranty on that. Here's our warranty on this. If you're talking to any other companies, start off by asking about this. Find out if the install is done by their own employees or subcontractors, you know, on a sort of a 1099 type thing as opposed to a full employee. He goes, that's what makes us stand out. That's why we have so many reviews online. I couldn't get through the other calls with the other companies. And he nailed it by saying, by the way, too, our rates are about the same as everyone else. So criteria setting is what to consider here. I don't want to spend too much more time on this one. But look at again, the question becomes, what content can you create that satisfies objections in advance, answers some of the more common questions, 
And then from there, will YouTube help was part of your question. Now it's really a decision as to, do you want that stuff to be public to everybody? Or do you want that to be behind a wall? And you could do this, not to nerd out on tech again, you could just have an unlisted video on YouTube. That's an easy strategy for this one. It could be, I, I use Vimeo or uh, other video platforms for behind the scenes type stuff. But consider again, what questions are they likely to have at that start of the game? My stuff on YouTube tends to point more so to the top of the funnel, where now the conversation, I'm seeing all sorts of thumbs up and likes on that one, hearts as well. Uh, I'm gonna make sure my top of funnel content is driving towards my one main call to action that I'm the most focused on, which I'd imagine for you is, hey, if this sounds like something that's resonating for you, I can't wait to speak with you soon, if it's on YouTube. Check the description down below for a link to get on a call directly with me. Uh, the same way that uh, I will sometimes buy easy to remember website addresses and just make that point at something rather than going, just go to jasonlenette.com. Don't worry about the spelling. I own all the wrong misspellings. And then they redirect the right one, but then put on the extension. Uh, too, much, too many words. We just bought this. It's not active as of now. Now that, now that I'm about to say it, I have to turn it on as soon as we finish this presentation, though you're all watching this inside of it, so you don't have to test it. jasoninfluencegroup.com is just going to point to this Facebook community. Ultimate sales conversation, sidewalk, one end. Let me know if that was helpful to you. Just write the word helpful down in the comments down below. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts and ideas are around this breaking the funnel system down. Because again, every single step along the journey is answering specific questions they may have. And here's where the influence comes into it. If you are addressing potential concerns, either before they ever think of it, or as the idea pops into their mind, you are now driving the communication in their brain, <laughs> ethically, and this is what's now positioning you as that expert who's now ready to move forward inside of this. I'm glancing around because I've got the command center uh, set up here, which uh, let me take the easy one next. Uh, again, questions you've got on creating content that drives the sales. Drop those in the comments down below. We'll feature you and I'll just answer it here while we're still going. I got a quick question from Mo. Uh, do you use a teleprompter for your videos? So uh, full disclosure, uh, right now I've got one, two, three monitors in front of me and uh, this actually is a teleprompter setup, uh, Glide Gear. Uh, and I've got a monitor, look at that, there's the ceiling fan <laughs> down below. But that's how, when I'm teaching the mastermind groups, that's when I'm working with someone one-to-one, -one. I'm looking directly down the barrel of the lens. And it doesn't look like I'm like everyone else on uh, Zoom when I'm teaching. Uh, so it's not entirely necessary to do this. Uh, I don't like having to read a script. Um, and even from a previous career working with actors working with performers and management is the role that I was. Uh, it is a technique. It is a skill to learn how to look at a computer monitor and not look like you're reading. So if anything, I may throw a few bullet points up on this little monitor here in Word, but that's uh, pretty much it. Let's see. Aiden, direct from Ireland, I believe, uh, sent the email in. Again, as you've got questions, drop them in the comments down below and we'll address them here in real time. Aiden asked, I'm presuming you're referring to niche specific content. And I got a couple of questions about niche. Uh, by the way, around these parts, we say niche rather than niche because niche rhymes with rich. There you go. Uh, I'm presuming you're referring to niche specific content with precise, precise positioning of hypnotic language, embedded commands, et cetera. That's kind of part of the intro. I think that came in by way of the emails. That's really where this all has come from, is over the years, by listening to some of the most effective presenters, listening to some of the most influential salespeople. Um, there's a story I probably shouldn't tell. So here it is. Uh, and I'll leave out the name, but she is to this day one of the best-selling fitness people ever, whether it's from home shopping network to QVC to infomercials to online ads whoever you're assuming, top fitness instructor, you're probably right. Um, 
I'd encourage you to step into a fascination. I, I have to highlight that. It's not showing the name here for some reason, but uh, yay, technology. Tell it. Take a guess by message, and I'll neither confirm nor deny. You'll see why here. Because there was a questionable thing about this event that I was at. We were all promised that you are now attending an event specifically for our top students, which is why this is going to be a no-pitch event. From our community, this is them talking now, we don't have a product to sell you beyond what most of you already have. And if you don't have everything in our suite of programs, you'll join many of them um, eventually, is what they said in a bit of a tongue-in-cheek way. And all of a sudden, she hits the stage, full energy. Everybody's on their feet. They're excited. She's a surprise presenter. And she then leans into the biggest, hardest sales pitch you had ever heard. Now, around me, people were getting offended. They were getting upset because, to be fair, we were promised this would be a no-pitch event. And she's selling hard. And around me, people are muttering things. People are like get packing up their stuff and getting ready to go. It's not going well. And someone looks over me and uh, someone goes, what are you doing? And I go, shut up, I'm transcribing. <laughs> so there's a fascination towards how people communicate a message in such a way that again drives that communication. There's a fascination around how what happens when we take specific hypnotic words and specific language patterns and plug them into the right places at the right time so that, again, our ideal clients, our ideal audiences are wanting more from us even before we make the offer. And even better, this brings in a theme, Aiden, of calibration where now we're only ever moving to the next logical step when we see that that rapport, that value is actually already there. So yes, for the folks in the mastermind that I run, which by the way, if this is something that you need help with, uh, just drop the word words in the description, in the comments down below. Drop that word words and either me or someone on my team will reach out to you and we'll kind of open up a dialogue of how to do exactly this, about plugging in the right influential language patterns at the right time. Though the reality is, if we can't even influence ourselves, how well is it going to go when we influence others? To which the delight was, by the way, just to tie up the thread of that fitness story, as much as people were insulted that suddenly and again we had been promised no sales, there was a beautiful moment where there was a line at the back of the room because people clearly saw the value in terms of what was actually being presented. So again, when we can do this on purpose, so many of these patterns of hypnotic influence and things out of neurolinguistic programming, things out of hypnotherapy and how they apply over to business, the techniques are actually quite simple. The artistry is knowing exactly when, where, and why to put them. Let me combine this with another question though from John about do I have to pick a niche? Do I have to pick a specialty? And let me now kind of give you another point of view on this. Because the more people that I talk to that are kind of in a bit of a startup phase, the more people that I interact with who are kind of stifling their own success, I will leave out the name once again, but I was getting uh, Facebook messages this morning when I was at the gym at 5.45 in the morning from someone who was asking me what's a good live event I should go to, to which I was responding, have you made use of what you've already got? Have you implemented the things necessary to actually bring in clients? So do you need more skills or do you have the sufficient skills and now the real quality of your work is going to take action as now you're actually helping people, you're booking new clients, you're bringing people into your products, your services, your programs, your offers. So the sticking point for a lot of people is, I don't know my niche. So there's one school of thought that would say, be specific to be terrific, pick something and become the expert at that, as opposed to the jack of all trades. So specifically, someone in my mastermind, he's a contractor, he does outdoor 
entertainment spaces. He installs outdoor like grills and embedded seating areas, not like going to Home Depot and buying furniture, like real brickwork and actually just gorgeous stuff that he builds. If you really pressed him, he could probably repair, you know, like the uh, the post going down a stairwell in your spiral staircase if you had one in your house. Uh, if you really needed him to, he could probably patch drywall. But the thing that he's the most excited about these days, and admittedly, after like 30 years experience as a general contractor, this is kind of his version of retirement to only do the projects he's the most excited about. Let me call it one thing that he and I did together, by the way. Um, he had started off as a brand new contractor owning his own company, even though he had 30 years experience doing it. So as back to Barbara's question about the strategy call, he changed the criteria in the first couple of minutes. Hey, thank you so much for this phone call. And uh, do you mind if I ask you a couple of things before we dive into your project? Okay, cool. Because I'm imagining that you're probably calling around because you might have noticed that I'm not like the first hit on Google or Yelp, and I'll tell you why very easily. I used to work for this company, yeah, the ones with all the vans in the area, and as he's now retiring, uh, the family doesn't want to run the business. So I stepped aside to then launch my own things, and now that I'm in my early 60s, my passion is doing these entertainment spaces outside, and I'm imagining that's why you're calling me, right? Good. So just a heads up, uh, I'm going to send you an email with all sorts of testimonials. Uh, my prices are pretty much in line with everyone else in the area, though I'd imagine because you're making these calls, it probably means, those of you in the mastermind are picking up the language pattern here, because you're making these calls, it probably means you're getting a little anxious to actually get this project done. And as a heads up, I'm looking at Monday next week, I could get started then. But we'll come back to that later. Tell me about your project. So there's a whole looping in terms of setting expectation that he was doing there. And I, I bring this story up because at his point in his career, he just wants to do one thing and you have that right to make that decision in the shape of your own business. That being said, there's a slightly different angle. You can be that person who solves a very specific problem for people. And by being that person who solves a very specific problem, now your marketing is where you niche down. It's in the marketing you niche into the very specific situations as to who are the people that fall into that, which I'll talk about what I do here as an easy example of this. I work with business owners. I work with entrepreneurs. I work with solopreneurs, most of them in the coaching and consulting industry, though, we can often sometimes bring in accountants and contractors and fitness people into that world too. And the specific problem that I help to solve is exactly what Barbara was bringing up here earlier. Lead acquisition is not yet the entire issue. It's the actual conversion of clients driving the content communication in such a way that now these people want more from us even before we make the offer. So if I'm in front of a group of therapists and counselors, you can see that changes my messaging, but at the core, it's still the very specific same problem. If I'm talking to people in the financial space, part of what they often run into is that there's a lot more people in those communities and standing out as a personality-based business and giving them a reason to do business with that person exactly, as opposed to anybody else in the world. That's the problem that they're facing. The answer is, embed influential patterns inside of your messaging, your marketing, your content strategy in such a way that, again, people want more from you even before you make the offer. We're going to wrap this up in like seven or eight minutes. So anybody who's got a question, drop it down in the comments down below. And I'll kind of tie this all together from my side of things here too. I'm just going to take a look here because uh, I'm getting the comments on two different screens at once as we're rolling here. There we go. So the final thought on this is, put intention behind all that you do. And again, if any of this that I've been talking about is something that you need help with, just comment the word words 
down below, make it plural. That way that we'll see it, put it in all caps, shout it out. <laughs> that way we'll see it. And either myself or someone on my team will reach out to you and open up a dialogue to find out more about where you are in the shape of your business and specifically what help you need. But let's bring it back to this idea of content. Um, <laughs> question from the chat here, uh, just to call this out. Well, Jason Influence Group is the one that will bring you back to this group. So if you're commenting right now, you don't have to worry about that. But that was an example. That was a teaching metaphor. The way that if I'm at a conference, uh, I did something like uh, Jason HTL Influence dot something a while ago. Don't pop up somewhere and give the extremely long URL with all sorts of extensions. Go to like GoDaddy or whatever name server you like for websites. And for everything, back to YouTube, uh, for everything you don't know how to do, a 12-year-old named Philip has put up a video on YouTube explaining how to do it. It's a very simple task to create a redirect. I call this a vanity URL. But let's tie this back together then with content. So we want to make sure everything that we create serves a specific purpose. There's this trend that's out there right now of telling people just to simply put themselves out there. And you see people just talking about an idea, going on these long walks and never quite getting anywhere, you want to make sure your content is actually driving that influential communication, opening up this dialogue in their mind, highlighting the issue that they wish to resolve, and then positioning yourself as that person who can help them to actually make that happen. So as you start to make use of any content, which I make it easy for you by giving you some templates, giving you some frameworks, whether it's hypnotic writing for websites, whether it's video influence for everything from a short form video or a long form live stream as we've been doing here today. If this is something you need help with, drop that word, words down below. But I wanna thank the many of you for joining me here in live real time here as well. And let's keep this dialogue going. Keep your questions going in the comments down below. Change your words, change your business, change your life. See you all soon.